G'day and welcome to the third video in our Project 200 series detailing the touring build of a Toyota Land Cruiser 200 turbo diesel. Today I'm going to be installing a complete Tough Dog suspension system comprising assembled front struts, rear springs and adjustable shock absorbers. Because my vehicle is equipped with KDSS, the first step in the process is to open the KDSS shutter valves which are under this protective plate about halfway down the vehicle on the left hand side. Using a 5mm Allen key, open both KDSS valves, three full turns, no more. The next step is to measure the height of each corner of the vehicle, then note the measurement on the installation sheet. With the front of the vehicle supported on chassis stands, remove both front wheels. The next step is to disconnect the steering arm from each front wheel then hold it up out of the way using a cable tie. Before we can remove the strut, we need to loosen the upper ball joint. Make sure you leave the nut in place to stop it falling out completely. You'll also need to disconnect the sway bar linkage. The next step is to remove the single large bolt holding the bottom of the strut in place and the four small nuts holding the top. With the upper ball joint loosened and all the linkages removed, you can then lever the strut out of position. Installation of the new strut is basically a reverse of the removal procedure. Install the top of the strut first and loosely fit the nuts to hold it in position. Then carefully lever the bottom of the strut into its slot. Once it's in place, insert the large retaining bolt, but don't tighten the nut until the vehicle is back on the ground. Doing so will cause damage to the bush in the bottom of the strut. You can then fully tighten the four nuts on the top of the strut and move on to the upper ball joint, retensioning the nut and installing a new retaining pin. Next up, reattach all the sway bar linkages, then the steering arms, ensuring you install new retaining pins. With the front wheels refitted and the vehicle lowered to the ground, you can then tension the nut on the lower strut mount. With the front half of the vehicle now complete, you can move on to the rear. Again, the first step is to raise the back of the vehicle and support it on chassis stands. With the weight of the rear axle being supported by a jack, the next step is to undo the sway bar linkages on both sides and also the handbrake retainers from the chassis. This will allow the axle to drop further, making it easier to get the springs in. Next, remove the bolts retaining the bottom of the shock absorbers and pull the bottom of the shocks off their mounting pins. You can then lower the axle housing with a jack until the spring is no longer under any load. Keep an eye on the brake lines to ensure they don't come under tension. With the springs now loose but still sitting in position, you can easily lift them out of place towards the rear of the vehicle. The internal bump stops will generally come out with the springs. With the springs out of the way, you can remove the standard shock absorbers and install the new ones. It's a bit fiddly, but the best access to the top nuts is through the small gap between the chassis and the body inside the wheel arches. With the top of the shocks bolted in, it's time to move on to the coils. You'll notice that they're marked left and right hand side. Make sure you don't mix them up. The top of the coil just goes up into the chassis rail, and the bottom will just slip into place on the axle housing. You can then raise the axle housing and begin reassembly. Start by installing the shock absorber to the lower mounting pin and replacing the bolt. Use some Loctite to ensure it stays put. Finally, replace the handbrake clips and the sway bar linkages using a 6mm Allen key to hold the bolt as you tension the nut. With the wheels on and the car back on the ground, let it settle for a couple of minutes and then give it a bounce before you tighten the KDSS shutter valves. You can then write all the new measurements on the sheet provided. Now let's go for a test drive. Driving the 200 on the road, the first thing you'll notice is the improved vision from the lifted front end. You now find yourself looking straight out at where you're going instead of down at the road. The ride is slightly firmer, but by no means uncomfortable, and the handling is vastly improved over the standard suspension, particularly nose diving under brakes, which is now almost non-existent. Off-road, the suspension feels far better controlled, even with the shocks on their softest seat. There's loads of additional wheel travel over standard, and the improved clearance, especially at the front end, makes the vehicle far more capable off-road than with the standard suspension. Well that about covers the suspension install for the Land Cruiser 200. The only remaining step is to make sure you retension all the bolts after a few hundred kilometres, 
and take it in for a wheel alignment. Finally, please remember that working on vehicles is potentially dangerous. You should only attempt to install suspension if you've got the tools and the qualifications to do the job properly. See you next time.